So when you read non-fictional texts, a main goal is to understand the content, what the author is trying to tell you about something. And in this video, I will say something about finding the message first, but because the message is often conveyed by the author using different modes of persuasion, meaning different techniques to make you believe the message, I will always also say something about ethos, pathos and logos, which we refer to as rhetorical appeals. So, when you read a text, you are trying to find the main message. And sometimes you read two texts about the same topic, and you're trying to find how the arguments differ, or how the author uses different ways to convince you of something. And when you're trying to find the main message of a text, keep in mind a few things. One, what is the purpose of the text you have in front of you? Is it to inform you, to simply give you facts about something, or is the purpose to persuade you into something? Is the author trying to convince you to believe in something or to change your mind even on something? Understanding the purpose of the text can often help you understand the content better. Then, when it comes to finding the main arguments of the text, the main points, a helpful thing here is to understand that a good writer often writes with separate paragraphs. And that each paragraph contains a main idea or a main topic. And if the author is really good, this argument, this main idea, will often be placed in the first sentence of the paragraph. This is good news for us because sometimes we can run through an article or a text and find the main arguments or ideas in the first sentence of each paragraph. And you will learn more about this later in our writing course. But for now, it is helpful to know that each paragraph is a thought unit and usually contains one topic or a central idea placed in the first sentence. A third thing to keep in mind when you read texts where the author is trying to convince you of something is whether or not you find the text to be convincing. Do you believe the author? And that brings me to my next point in this video, modes of persuasion. Now, Greek philosopher Aristotle has shaped the way we understand and teach rhetoric, the art and the techniques of persuasion. His influential work focuses on several aspects of argumentation, the structure and composition of an argument, the use of language as a tool to achieve precision and clarity, and not least the different modes that a speaker or writer can use to persuade the audience. Among these modes are ethos, pathos and logos. So, if you want to write about something that you care about, for instance climate change, you can use different rhetorical techniques or appeals to convince the reader. Often you combine these and sometimes not. You will see these persuasive modes in writing, but also in speeches and often in commercials. Now, ethos is when the writer uses character, credibility or expertise to convince you. And the goal is that you trust the author or the speaker. Now, usually it creates trust when the speaker is admired or educated or has a career or life experience that gives credibility. A classic example is this one. I have spent the last five years of my life studying glacier change in the Canadian Arctic as part of my PhD. Now, often we listen to people who seem to know what they're talking about. Similarly, a commercial would use a dental specialist to sell you dental products rather than the guy next door. On the other hand, you can sometimes create ethos and respect when you don't have experience. For instance, if you humbly emphasize that you're very young, or like Donald Trump, who stresses that he's not a politician, he does not think or act like a politician, and this gives credit among people who are skeptical towards politicians. So, ethos is the means of convincing the audience by offering reliability, honesty and credibility which is also why the mode is called ethos, appealing to ethics or credibility. Now, the next mode is pathos. 
This is when the author uses emotions or passion to persuade the reader. And the goal here is to convince by evoking an emotional response. An example here would be, I have seen polar bears dying of exhaustion due to lack of food and the lack of stable glaciers. And often adding a picture would add to the emotional response in an article or commercial. Now, keep in mind that pathos will not only evoke pity or grief, often writers will evoke positive feelings and emotions through warm descriptions and stories of joy. Now, the last and very effectful and often necessary rhetorical appeal is logos. And this is when the author uses logical reasoning and evidence to persuade. Often, this means referring to statistics or facts or figures. Our friend writing about climate change would then refer to solid research results followed by logical reasoning. Now, before I end this talk, remember that writers often combine these three techniques of persuasion. As the last example, I want to show you a rhetorical work of art. It is Greta Thunberg's speech to world leaders at a UN climate session in 2019. Take a look at how she combines ethos, pathos and logos in her speech. So, to sum up, when reading nonfiction, our main goal is to evaluate content. You're trying to find the main message and main arguments. At the same time, it is important that you can identify what rhetorical appeals are used to make you believe that message. And hopefully, you've picked up some ideas on how you can write and persuade your readers in the future.